PSVR pre-orders, awesome new games, meta controversies, and so much more. This is Rush Reality, I am Sam, and here is the VR news. So thanks for joining me today, there's quite a lot to talk about. We're gonna kick off with PlayStation VR pre-order alerts. So PlayStation recently activated the website for the PlayStation VR 2. It looks really cool, there's a lot of shots of the gear that add a bit of detail to what we already knew, it's really exciting times. But the cool thing is, that you can scroll down to the bottom and sign up for alerts on pre-orders, so we must be getting very close to pre-order time. I'd imagine they're using this mechanic as a bit of an interest gauger in how many people are going to sign up, and hopefully it means that they can prevent the issues with access that they've had for PlayStation 5s. Personally, I don't own a PlayStation 5 yet. I've held out because I've got a really good gaming PC, so I don't have quite the same interest, but now that PSVR is on the way, I'm gonna need that console. Hopefully the fact that you can pre-order and register interest early will mean that you've got a mechanic to beat the scalpers to the headset. Things could be looking good. Now you might have seen quite a few news articles lately that have been talking about how Meta's profits are declining, they've lost 10 billion over the last year, lots of sort of panic news and things like that. But I can promise you the Quest 2 is going from strength to strength. Over the weekend, Valve posted an update to their Steam hardware survey. That is a monthly opt-in initiative that tells you what hardware people are using on Steam. This January, so we're talking after Christmas, Quest 2 use went up by 6.3%. That means that Quest 2 now accounts for 46% of total usage across the network. Really impressive when you think just how many headsets there are on the market. Things are going pretty well for them. Next up, I want to discuss the Meta Safety Bubbles announcement. Now, I'd be really surprised how sort of controversial this has been viewed as. To me, it didn't seem like something that would be that contentious, but clearly it is. Now, this announcement was timed just after a woman claimed that she was sexually assaulted in the metaverse. This was quite a big story, so you've probably heard it in the mainstream press. Basically, within a minute of logging into the social platform Horizon, this woman was surrounded by three men who proceeded to try to grope her and provoked her with a string of sexual innuendos. Now Meta have responded to this by announcing a new safety feature they're going to be putting into Horizon. They call it the personal bubble, where you'll have a safe space around your character that people can't invade. Now a few other platforms do this already. Altspace do it really well. They've got a system you can turn on and off and use it as you please. There's been lots of criticisms of this with people saying, you know, what is the world coming to? This seems a bit silly. It's a virtual world. How can that even upset you? But I do actually understand where she's coming from, particularly if you're somebody who's been through an unfortunate experience in the real world, then you could easily be triggered by something like that in the virtual world. When you're new to VR, everything's very immersive and it feels very real. Although it's not your body, I could understand how those triggers could upset you. Now this has been all over social media and I'm in loads of the sort of Quest 2 groups and I often considered commenting, but every time I went into it, I was reading the comments that were going down there and I thought, man, just bail out, don't get involved. Now the biggest criticisms that I could see were the fact that it was gonna be a mandatory feature. It does make a lot more sense to make it a voluntary thing that you opt into. But Meta have come back and said that they will now look further into it and consider adapting it so that maybe you can tailor the experience to suit you best. This does feel like a good middle point and it's possibly the first time that I can remember Meta bowing to any sort of public pressure. Now, before we go on, I want to tell you about the sponsor of this week's video. I have teamed up with an awesome video provider to bring you free weekly VR video content. That sounds amazing, doesn't it? Now, the way to get this video content, you have to minimize this video. You see that little button below the video that says subscribe? Click on that and turn it gray. That's right, I'm the sponsor. <laughs> No one else would be mad enough to sponsor this crap. Next up, I want to tell you about an awesome looking VR game that has really caught my eye. It's a co-op shooter, it's called Gambit. It's brought to us by Xreal, the developers of Zero Calibre, and it looks really, really cool. I'm getting vibes of Borderlands. Everything's got that sort of quirky, kind of mad feel to it. The visuals look really crazy. It's not quite cell shaded like Borderlands, but it's got that kind of vibe. And I'm always up for any sort of cool co-op game, so a great one to add to the roster. We're told to expect it around May time. It will launch on Steam and Quest, so I am adding it to my wish list. It's just been announced that Meta are gonna launch a virtual arcade called Questies. This looks really cool. I love the kind of sleek style of the environment. It's been built by some of the top Horizon Worlds editors, and it's gonna feature games and virtual pizza. Now, virtual pizza sounds a bit pants, but I'm all up for some fun games, and if it makes for a nice social experience, then all the better. Now, for the past week or so, I have been stuck headfirst into Zenith VR. It's been an awesome experience. I have really enjoyed this game. I've seen it getting a lot of criticism, but you know, this is one of the first games that tried to do something on such a large scale, and I think they've done a fantastic job of it. It has genuinely pulled me in. Now we've just had an announcement that they're gonna be dropping their first major update very soon, and they're gonna be announcing the Ninja class, 
which is going to feature the use of a bow, it's going to add a few extra mechanics to the game, something I think is much needed. Almost everyone seems to have gone for the mage DPS class, so it's really cool that they've put something else in there that could pull people over. I think this game is going to go from strength to strength. This week it demonstrated that strength by topping out the Steam charts. Not just the Steam charts for VR, the total Steam charts. Now I haven't ever seen a VR game do that. It's very possible that Half-Life Alex did, but I'm not sure. I certainly haven't seen it for a very, very long time. So this is very exciting news. It shows that the area is growing and growing. And the last thing I want to talk about today is the successful launch of the Les Mills Body Combat app. Very possible, I'm pronouncing that wrong and it could be Les Mills, but however it is, they've done really well. Basically, it's a fitness app that seeks to take on the likes of FitXR and Supernatural, but it's doing so without a subscription model. You pay a one-off purchase, I think it's $29.99, and then you're in for good. Now that is a great price when compared to the subscription models you would otherwise have to look into. Initial looks show a game that is basic but very well thought out. Getting the important things right and leaving lots to be built upon is brought to us by the developers of O Shape. Now talking of O Shape, if you want to see me slapping on the spandex and having a go at O Shape, then click on the video I'll put the link to in the corner. It's from a while ago and it is a bit embarrassing but it's worth a look. So there we are, that is your news. I hope you enjoyed that. If that was useful to you, then do me a favour, hit the like button. And if you want to see content like this in the future, then a sub to the channel would be amazing. I will see you next time. Thank you very much and goodbye.